You have located Geekfest Rants, the entertainment podcast for genre geeks like you. Shall we play a game? Covering the world of vintage and current film and television since 2010. Game over, man. Game over. Featuring in-depth conversations on sci-fi, horror, fantasy, comics, toys, and conventions. So say we all. So say we all. And now sit back, relax, and enjoy today's show. From Mike Judge, creator of Beavis and Butthead and co-creator of King of the Hill, comes a movie about people who go to work. <laughs> who are part of a team. And remember, next Friday is Hawaiian Shirt Day. Okay, but if I could set the building on fire. Who respect their boss. We need to talk about your flair. Well, I have 15... 15 pieces on. 15 is the minimum. Brian, for example, has 37 pieces of flair on today. <laughs> and a terrific smile. And need to escape. I don't like my job, and I don't think I'm going to go anymore. But one of these days, I, I, I just I just kick this piece of... I'm thinking now it might be more fun to just get fired. And I've always wondered what that would take. Oh, Peter, listen. Uh, mm. Well, it looks like you've been missing quite a bit of work lately. Well, I wouldn't say I've been missing it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a straight shooter with upper management written all over him. We're going to be getting rid of these people here. Mr. Samir. Okay, okay. Najat. 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 Not going to work here anymore anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been showing up and you got to keep your job. Actually, I'm being promoted. Thank you, Bob. This is a... It sucks! They're gonna throw you out on the street so that Bill Lumberg's stock will go up. Ooh, it's completely unfair. Inatech deserves to go down. We're just the guys to do it. Tell me about that virus you're always talking about. The one that could rip off the company for a bunch of money. I'm not going to do anything illegal, Peter. Illegal? Samir, this is America. The worst they're gonna do is they put you in a white collar minimum security resort for a couple of months. You know they have conjugal visits there? I might be showing them my old face. Oh, oh. They let you have sex with women? They sure do. Okay, I'll do it. Office space. I know you've been getting pretty depressed about your job and everything, and so I just wanted to tell you good things can happen in this world. I mean, look at me. <laughs> Everybody and welcome once again to Geek Fresh Rants. Today we have a show where we're going to examine three different pieces of art, if you will. A movie, a television show, and a musical comedy special from Netflix. First up, we're going to have Office Space, a classic cult favorite comedy that in the past, you know, I used to love it just for the sheer comedy of it, but now I love it even more for the message of the film it is one of these things that is hitting home very uh, directly with the recent things that have been happening in my life in my professional and and medical <laughs> related life the second one is a new television show called severance on apple tv again very similar in terms of examining life in an office and how your work life is different than your home life but instead of this being a comedy like office space this one is more of a sci-fi horror which is a great new take on that kind of theme which again it brings a bell it strikes a chord it really connected with me uh, recently and the third item we're going to look at is a Netflix special called Bo Burnham Inside. And again, I never heard of this individual. I watched it just as a fluke, just to kind of get it over with, to just kind of try it to see if it was any good. And my God, this thing was amazing. <laughs> I loved it. It covers so many 
topics, the particular type of comedy, the particular type of social commentary, politics, everything resonated with me really well, including the issues that this performer has, his personal issues that are part of the show. Uh, they're part of his performance. And in this particular case, he made a special on his own at home. He filmed it, edited it, he did the whole thing. And it is available in Netflix for everybody to watch. And again, these three pieces are all connected is for me at this time. So let's begin with Office Space. What did I teach you? You are the Duke of New York. You are a number one. You will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn by the numbers. I will teach you. Can you dig it? Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. That spawn of Satan. <laughs> oh, really? The force will be with you, always. All right, the first of these three pieces of art that we're going to talk about because I can't really call them movies and I can't really call them specials and I can't because they are not they are distinctly different but they do have one thing in common is that they resonate with me very very much over the last two to three months ever since I I took the little hiatus from the show and the things that have been happening and I'm sorry to be so cryptic about exactly what's going on because as i mentioned before it was it's it's a it's a work related medical thing but through art just like many other things is one of the ways of dealing with issues and uh you know not only medicine and not only people that you can talk to and th those sort of things but art also really helps you to kind of Focus and explain your feelings. Let's talk about Office Space. The movie Office Space has been around for quite a bit. I believe it came out in 99. I probably didn't see it till it came to cable at some point, or maybe I rented it, I don't know. But overall, the film was considered a flop. I think it cost $10 million to make, and it made about 12.2. So, yeah, that's a flop. However, later through Comedy Central re-airing the crap out of it, you know, enough people got to see it and started to enjoy it. And, and then, you know, DVDs and, you know, video and all, you know, all that other stuff that made the movie very popular. You can kind of call it the, more or less the definition of a cult classic. The setting is basically an office building that works in some kind of a computer tech environment. And you have everybody working on their cubicles. And the mundane and tedious lives that they live and the frustrations that they go through uh, as they do that, obviously in a comedy setting. This comes from Mike Judge, the creator of Beavis and Butthead. And specifically, this was based on a specific animated short, a series of them that he had done for Liquid Television. If you guys remember that specific show i forget if it was comedy central or mtv or something i don't know something like that but anyway in these shorts he had a character named milton who was you know a very nervous very threatening in a way kind of individual who was very frustrated by his job and that's what kind of spun the idea of turning that character and obviously then more characters into a movie Again, I can't really go into scene by scene in terms of how the story evolves. But if you've never seen this film, watch it. Hopefully you will like it. There are so many memorable characters. The character of Milton, again, is so funny. You know, he's got this swing line stapler that he keeps mumbling about how he was promised that he could keep the stapler no matter where part of the company he went. And at one point, his boss takes it away from him just to mess with him, just to, just to needle him. And, and, you know, and <laughs> the guy just goes nuts <laughs> at a certain point, but you kind of, as the audience, you start to see the pattern and you see the signs that this guy might do something crazy. Again, it's a comedy, so nobody really 
dies, I believe, in the film. <laughs> but he is such a good actor. I mean, I've seen Stephen Root, who plays Milton, in so many other films and television shows. And in this one, he was so perfect, so perfect for that character that, you know, you cannot help but love that, that character. The star of the movie is David Livingston, who, who plays Peter. And he is somebody who, again, he's completely drained. Like, his life has been drained out of him in this job. He, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like his... He hates his boss. His girlfriend, he's having problems with his girlfriend. And on a suggestion, he goes to a hypnotherapist to kind of calm himself down, to, to kind of not really care much about what's happening, you know, to kind of kind of sedate him a little bit. And in the process, the psychotherapist has a heart attack. So he leaves the office in this state of hypnosis where he just is calm and doesn't care and then proceeds to live his next couple of days, next couple of weeks in that state where he goes into work just not caring about what they do to him, what he does, and the funny reactions that people get from him based on that behavior. Again, it definitely struck a chord <laughs> with me, and not only back then, in general, in terms of the funny, the funniness of the movie, but particularly now, that character and the, the way that he's approaching problem with the company. Uh, another great character is Gary Cole, who plays Bill Lumberg. Bill Lumberg was one of the best things in this movie since the beginning. He is a boss that just does not listen to you. He's got his own thing and he just kind of steamrolls over anything you try to explain or say to him. It's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. But anyway, do what I'm, you know, do this that I'm telling you to do, you know, that, that kind of an individual. The imitations, the, the parodies are out there. You'll see them. They're fantastic. His two friends, Peter's friends are uh, David and Ajay, and two other great characters. Uh, one is uh, his character's name is Michael Bolton, and he's very frustrated at the fact that everybody always asks him if he's related to Michael Bolton or anything like that. And Ajay, like, they never, nobody can ever pronounce his name right, and he's always having issues with this particular printer <laughs> that is always giving everybody problems. You also have John McGingley. We named his, uh, we, you know, his name sounds familiar. We, we talked about him back when we did our platoon special. He plays one of the two Bobs, the, the workforce reduction experts. Uh, Bob Porter and uh, Paul Wilson and, and John McGinley, and they're the two Bobs. And how they react to Peter's behavior and Peter's straightforward honesty because of the hypnotherapy that he had gone under. Lots of little other characters sprinkled throughout Mike Judge uh, has a uncredited cameo. Uh, he plays the, one of the restaurant managers. Uh, I forgot to mention, obviously, the probably the biggest name is Jennifer Aniston. You know, at the time she plays Peter's, I guess you'd call a love interest, new girlfriend. Uh, she has the whole thing uh, again. If you're familiar with it about the flair, she's working at a, I think she works at a Tchotchkes or something, and it, which is supposed to be like a TGIF, and how her boss is always hassling her over the amount of buttons that she's wearing or not wearing, and uh, how she kind of loses it at one point because she's not wearing enough flair. They call it flair, and again, these are things that because the movie was so unsuccessful theatrically. It's amazing that up to this day, you still get a lot of callbacks having to do with the jokes in this movie. The actors, uh, you know, there's a couple of interviews out there on YouTube and, and, and in print where they talk about how, yeah, they were completely blown away by the, the reaction that came later. The video market, the cult status, uh, how they walk into places and they hear people, you know, saying those lines and they're like, wow, that's amazing that they that people actually connected. And they've had anniversary editions, DVDs, I think, and maybe possibly Blu-rays also of the film and, you know, lots of extras in it and, and deleted scenes and this and that, making of, you know, again, it's a great film. I personally... <laughs> 
I personally, uh, for the longest time, uh, have had uh, at work a red swing line, and it's a red swing line is a very important thing because it's it's again it's Milton's. Uh, it, I think this swing line is what's really holding Milton's sanity together, because once they remove uh, the swing line. <laughs> He just loses it. And and again, his character is hilarious because, you know, once they bring in these efficiency experts, they realize that Milton really doesn't work here. He's been coming to work for years, but as a result of an error where he was apparently fired, but he was never told he was fired. So for some reason, he still collects the check, but he's not on the records of, of the company. So... Again, it's one of those many, many hilarious things in the film. I, uh, like I said, I, I actually own one. At work, I ordered my red swing line. Apparently, according to what I'm reading here, the movie tried initially to approach the two other companies so that they could, uh, you know, this will be the stapler that Milton would be using. And according to what I'm reading, they approached Boston or Bostitch, brands and they couldn't get permission to use them but staples did so they basically painted a staples stapler red for the movie later many many years later once the movie became very popular on video and you know again cult status staples put out a red swing line in honor of the film and that's the one that i have at work again it depends on your generation it depends on how savvy you are with films you know comedies that sort of thing that some people not a lot but some people you know when they see the Ritz swing line they kind of make the connection it's kind of like a wink wink oh yeah I get it <laughs> Speaking. Uh, and I remember also personally personally that I had introduced into most of the jobs that I've had, most of the full-time jobs that I've had, a TPS report. And uh, obviously in the film, the TPS report is, it's basically a cover sheet to be used on certain documents for faxing or something. But that is the crux of an ongoing joke, you know, in the movie. So I remember what I did is I, I made a TPS cover sheet and it is basically a trade submission request. So if any of my employees uh, want to trade shifts as opposed to asking for a day off, as opposed to filling out a form to ask for a day off, I asked them to fill out the TPS form because it's the trade submission request form. Again, my uh, <laughs> subtle addition of something very memorable from this film, you know, to be added into my work life. This movie continues to resonate. Again, I watched it again over the last few days. And yeah, it's interesting how, as I mentioned earlier, as a whole, it's still funny. But to me, the character of Peter and his attitude, you know, in order to maintain his sanity through that hypnotherapy that he has uh, by, you know, by accident that it's it kind of sick, you know, they never bring him out of that state at the end of the conclusion. Cause the guy, I think the the guy had, has a heart attack or something, the, uh, the doctor. So he's going through the next couple of days and weeks in that state of, you know what? I don't really care. I don't really care. And, uh, whether I do this or not, I'm not going to get rewarded and it just doesn't really matter what happens next. So, you know what? I'm not going to quit. I'm just going to, you know, do what I need to do and we'll see where that takes me. That kind of attitude. Again, by themselves, they might not make too much sense, but together they're a perfect depiction of what's going through me <laughs> very recently and right now. Television. Television is not the truth. Television is an amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. The next piece we're going to cover is a television series on Apple TV called Severance. I had no clue, first of all, what this was. I've never heard of it. I think I accidentally ran into it while I was watching G4, which is the channel that has restarted from the old G4, where they talk about movies and geek stuff and video games and all that kind of stuff. Well, that channel has restarted. And in one of the 
segments that they were doing, they were asking one of the many co-hosts, you know, what are you watching? You know, what, what show do you recommend? And the guy mentioned Severance and they showed a little, I think they might've shown even a little clip of it. And then I went and watched the trailer and based on the description, oh my God, was this show something that just completely knocked me out. Last year, as you guys remember, was it last year or was it this year? I don't remember. Midnight Mass. That was like my favorite show that was put out. That was a Netflix one. This was an Apple TV. And again, based on what's going on lately and in the vein, if you will, of something like Off of Space, where it's a comedy, Off of Space is a comedy, but it's kind of based on real kind of situations. This is also based on kind of real situations in terms of what corporate life, you know, is like in a way and how you kind of feel about it. But this show, instead of it being a comedy, it's more of a sci-fi horror kind of bend to it. The premise of the show is basically your main character, who is played by Adam Scott, who used to be on Parks and Rec. His name is Mark. The main character works at a company called Lumen. And Lumen specializes in a procedure that they can kind of split you, memory-wise, from your work life and your home life. So while you're at home, you have no clue of anything you did at work and, and whatever feelings you have of work are not brought home. And when you're at work, you have no idea who you are at home, you just work and then you just keep working because you have no memory of you going home. Now, the individuals in this company, at least most of them that I'm aware of, they have their life, they travel to work, they go and park their car, and once they go on the elevator to reach the floor, that's where their memory stops functioning and the new memory starts functioning. It is a an incredible premise. And it's just so fantastic how you see the lives of the individuals at home. And, and you're getting to know them a little bit at a time. You're not giving everybody's backstory in one shot. And a little bit at a time, you start to realize, you know, your main character, you know, what his problems are at home and why he chose to do this very controversial procedure. Because in this particular world, society, whatever you want to call it, time, it is controversial. And pe there are people that are very much against it. And throughout the show, you start to find out that there is somebody who was actually able to sort of get away from that whole thing, to have it reversed or have him get out of it while remembering what was happening. The show basically starts off more or less with the introduction of a new character who has been brought in into this environment. Again, Little by little, we get to know who she is outside. And, oh my God, this is it, it is so full of surprises and unpredictable twists. One of the, well, there's a lot of very well-known actors in it. John Turturro plays one of these, his workmates, who, again, it's very even difficult to know or understand what it is that they do. They seem to be punching numbers into a computer and kind of moving things around, but they don't even understand what they're doing. And they really don't want to understand because there's this, this entire hovering kind of mentality and culture corporate culture of don't ask questions, do what you're supposed to do, keep going, be productive, you know, don't stray from the path, you know, that kind of, but you also then start to find that the philosophy of this company is kind of cultish, almost religious-like in terms of how deep it goes. It's a lot of it, you know, reminds you of, you know, like those Apple it's an Apple TV, which is bizarre. Um, with those those Apple meetings, TED Talk kind of things that Steve Jobs used to do, where people were just fascinated by him and his his philosophy. Well, think of this as a similar kind of cultish following that borders on the you know on the horror side, on the you know crazy pseudo religious something. Another person that they meet 
or we meet uh, is uh, somebody that works in a completely different department and they have to kind of go out of their way to meet this person because normally they don't even let departments talk to each other. They're like, you know, you, you're not supposed to talk to that guy in that department because that department is, is not our department, you know, that kind of thing. And it's played by Christopher Walken out of all people in the world. Oh my God, he, he, again, he is fantastic in this role and him and Totoro have a thing that's going on that you're like, oh wow, is that really what's going on? And it's like, yes, that's what's going on. Mark's boss is played by Patricia Arquette, who I, I basically remember her most from Medium when, when I used to watch that show Medium and it's been many years, I think, since I've seen her do some steady kind of work. And she plays the boss, the manager, the direct manager. She's not the owner of the company. She's not the the part of the board of directors or anything like that. But she is the direct boss to Mark. And oh my God, she is such a beast in terms of the fierceness and the just about everything you could hate about a boss. It's there in her. It's amazing. You meet other players you also meet her outside and then you start to realize like wait a minute this is very different here this is not exactly what they're selling people they're doing something different and by the end of the first season you still don't exactly know the big big picture but you have enough clues that there's something happening this has been already been renewed i believe for a second season and i'm so glad it is and i cannot wait until they do that the way that the um the show is shot also it is very visual very dare i say kubrickian i just made up that word because of the name kubrick but very wide shots very graphically arranged geometrically framing especially when you're in the office when you're in the office building as opposed to when you're at home, when, when the characters are at home. There is a scene that completely reminded me of Ex Machina, Garland's Ex Machina. Remember that that dance scene with Oscar Isaac and the, one of the robots that comes out of nowhere, and it's just a fantastic dance scene? Well, there's a scene in this show where they're celebrating something. I forget what they were celebrating. They hit their gold or mild, some kind of goals that they set for themselves you know internally and they're having a party and patricia arquette's character has a second in command or not really in command but the guy that does like her dirty work let's say a sub manager (laughs) assistant manager i guess or something like that and his name is milchick and he's played by tramel tillman i was not aware of this actor and there's a dance scene where they're celebrating and they play music and he starts to kind of encourage everybody to dance and it is so out of character that all of a sudden he's very like expert (laughs) at dance like his moves are so smooth and it's like wow what what are we watching here what is happening here and everybody's kind of getting into it until the whole thing ends and he's back to his normal you know corporate self and that is that 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 is a character that I, I I cannot wait to find out more about you know him. In a way, this show reminds me a little bit of the cartoon, uh, the animated strip of Dilbert. Dilbert, uh, granted, Dilbert is more on the comedic side, you know, obviously, but Dilbert used to be also very much more on the mocking of corporate life so you can kind of see it a little bit more on the office space side but Dilbert as much as I absolutely love Dilbert and and Dilbert put out a management book I remember that I I was like oh my god this is incredible how good this is Uh, Dilbert is something that eventually I had to stop because something happened to that writer Scott Adams was it oh my god Adam Scott plays Mark and Scott Adams is the creator of Zilb. Anyway, that's bizarre. That's weird. But anyway, my point is something happened to him over the last, I don't know, four or five years politically where he kind of went in a direction that you never would have expected out of all people in the world, the creator of Dilbert to go that completely turned me off to him and his work. I appreciate all the stuff he did before. I love the stuff he did before. I'm not entirely sure what kind of writing he does now. Does he still have that same sense of humor? Or has he kind of morphed into 
you know, what his personal political beliefs are now. So I have, I have no clue. But it kind of, to me, you know, between severance and office space, it kind of throws me back into that Dilbert thing where things are so absurd that they are funny that, that there's there's humor in the absurdity of a corporate environment again i cannot gush more this is a show that i was like forcing my because when i watched stream shows you know netflix or whatever i don't binge i try not to binge because i want to make them last for as long as possible and this show is like a very good book as a matter of fact i am reading a, an amazing book right now called the 1619 Project, and it's a book that I'm getting close to the end, and I don't know if this has ever happened to you guys, but you're enjoying the book so much that you don't want it to end, and you're kind of slowing down the reading increments so you don't finish <laughs> it because you don't want to get away from it. This is what this show is like to me. Again, I keep thinking back of Midnight Mass where you're savoring, you're just savoring every episode. And that's how I was watching the show. I was just going next, next, next. And I was like, well, slow down. The downside of taking that kind of an attitude with a show, even if it's not a incredibly good show or a fantastic show anyway is that you end up you know not finishing shows i got tons of shows that i'm behind i haven't finished picard yet i haven't finished uh, cobra kai i haven't finished narcos <laughs> i want to start bosh i want to start the lincoln lawyer i just started strange new worlds but i'm not done with other stuff i didn't finish hawkeye and i didn't finish moon knight <laughs> So that is the downside of not binging is that you end up with all these shows. The Boys, oh my God, I never started season two. I never finished season two of Umbrella Academy, I think. So I'm, I'm behind on so much stuff. But when something hits you, like a freight train, like this show has, you know you have something special in your hands. And I cannot wait. I just cannot wait until this show comes back. And until we learn more about you know, these characters, one of the executive producers was Ben Stiller, and he directed a couple of episodes too. And one of the things that my, my wife was was watching the show at one point with me, and we noticed there were some familiar locations, and some of the uh, outdoor stuff there was shot in Nyack. So it's like, that looks familiar back in, in Nyack, New York. And they also shot part of it in Jersey. Apparently, they used the, the old Belt Labs complex as the Lumen headquarters. Again, this is one of those things that comes out of nowhere, and a lot of times that's the best place because there is no warning. It, you know, it hits you without you even knowing what hit you. And in this particular case, you get all these great actors and doing these roles. And again, with Adam Scott, he's primarily more familiar as a comedic actor. And this and over here, this is some serious work, some serious kind of scary kind of work. So cannot wait. And yes, it brought to me the corporate feeling that I used to be so familiar with back in uh, my MS NBC days, and that now I'm starting to feel a lot of it in my current work environment is the the morphing of, you know, you going from a mom and pop kind of feel to a super corporate kind of feel. I, I remember I, 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 when I first got out of college, I worked for what would be considered a mom and pop kind of production facility, post-production production facility. And it wanted to be corporate. It tried to be corporate. It could never be corporate because it was too small and too under budget to be corporate. But after that, I went headfirst into the corporate pool when I joined NBC. And, and especially when I got to 30 Rock. When we were at New Jersey, different locations in Jersey, we were still feeling kind of a little more independent and I don't want to say mom and pop because there's nothing mom and pop about the Jersey facility, but we were away from the mothership, let's say. But once they brought us into 30 Rock, forget it. It was over. Game over, man. Game over. And that was the, the beginning of the end as far as I was concerned, because you are in corporate mode 100%. Here, here, is a weird environment and part of what's been happening lately. It's it's part of the 
maturing into a fully corporate environment, not going from not so corporate to corporate, not because of distance, because you're switching locations like I did, you know, between Jersey and 30 Rock, but just plainly because of the growth of the individual company that you're in. Uh, you see those levers, you see those actions, you see those emails, you see those sub-managerial subdivisions, those onion uh, rings around, you know, people of red tape, just the, the grind <laughs> that comes with uh, a corporation fully embracing a corporate structure. So this really s spoke to me in a different way where office space speaks to me in a comedic manner with very realistic situations. This one speaks to me in a more of a horror, dramatic sci-fi bend to it directly from a corporate environment. So I strongly recommend grab this show, find it, figure out a way of downloading it, streaming it, do whatever you need to do, watch this show. What kind of music do you usually have here? Oh, we got both kinds. We got country and western. If you don't eat your meat, you can't have any pudding. How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Do you mind if we dance with your dates? Why well, no, not at all. Go right ahead. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These grown to 11. We just washed the hair. No, I work on my hair a long time. He, he hit it. He hits my hair. Guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Okay, the third entry in today's group of artistic media is a television special on Netflix called Bo Burnham Inside. Once again, no clue, zero, zero clue what this is about. Had never heard the name before. Scrolling through Netflix, one of these things that pops up as, you know, top 10 shows or whatever the current show. And and with Netflix, as you probably know, or some other streaming service, if you hover over something or if you let something hover, it will give you a slight little preview of what it is. And this performance would always start in the same spot. And I would always hear that sound or that music. And it would be like, what is it? It's so strange, weird. But I just would move away from it. But then one day, I don't know exactly why. Uh, his name must have come up somewhere. And I'm like, oh, is that the same guy that, that I keep seeing on the Netflix preview that keep popping up? I'm like, who is this guy? It's a, is he a comedian? Is he a performer? What the hell is he? I put it on. For those of you who don't know who Bo Burnham is, the easiest way to describe him, he's a musical comedian. He's a comedian, but he deals a lot with music and he incorporates it into his comedy. He's had a number of specials that he's done that, that some of them are still on Netflix. I believe he, they might be some audio only things. YouTube is full of performances that he's done, live performances. And from what I understand, he was also somewhat of a YouTube star in the early 2000s or the mid 2000s. That's how he kind of developed his, his show and his style and his performance. This particular show... This particular special that he did was apparently all done inside his house all by himself. And it's a series of songs and commentaries and things that are happening to him while he's stuck inside of his house because of COVID, because the danger of going out in a COVID world. However, he does explain during the performance that during his previous tour, which was about five years before, he started suffering from panic attacks while doing shows, while doing live shows. And apparently things got so bad that he had to stop performing because of these panic attacks. Again, you could kind of see the 
the red flag or the or the light bulb lighting here. Why is it that it's all of a sudden <laughs> associated with these other two things that I talked to you about before? While he stopped performing, he directed a film that I just watched called Eighth Grade, which is pretty good. And he apparently starred in a film also called Promising Young Woman. I believe had some smaller bit parts in other films, but those are like the two big ones, I think, that kind of jump out at you. Oh my God, he was in The Big Stick. I remember that movie. So yeah, he's done some little, some little things in between. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with that period of time where he had to stop performing. It's very difficult to describe the, the kind of comedy that he does. You just have to try it. And it's, if it's your cup of tea, it's your cup of tea. The fact that it's musical comedy is something that I am probably one of the last people in the world to appreciate musical comedy. Because, when, you know, you know how I am with musicals, you know, to, uh, film musicals, that sort of thing. I do not like them. I only like a very, very few of them. And if you were to describe his performance to me... I would say, nah, that's all right. That's not my thing. It grabs me and the social commentary, the political commentary, the mental health related issues that he talks about that he's suffered through and continues to battle, again, is something that, wow, talk about, you know, what a coincidence that all these things are happening at once. All these different things are, are hitting at the same time, you know, can, can uh, allow you to understand a little more what is actually taking place. When you go through some of his older shows, if you go that far, you see that pattern. You see that there is an ongoing struggle with this individual between the performance part and the private side, you know, of his personality and, uh, to me, this this is like perfect. This particular show, because it wasn't a live show. It was all, you know, produced. All the songs are different. They deal with so many different things. Very adult humor material. Visually super creative in such a small space with so limited materials that he has to be able to come up with, you know, these, I don't know, eight or 12 different segments or songs within the, you know, within the special. It, it's just, again, I, I, I was blown away while I was watching it. I was like, is this, this is actually very, and I, I think my wife was like, oh, this guy's stupid or something. And he, you know, he's being vulgar, but I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. This, this guy's, this guy's making sense. And this guy's, he's good. And it's funny because we have a friend. Well, we had a friend uh, back in college, a super talented guy, super funny guy, and the type of guy that you would say, "Oh my God, this guy should be working at SNL. He should be in television. He should be in movies. He should be doing all of this." But he's not. He does something different. And I'm like, "Oh my God, this guy." This is what this guy would have been if he would have had the opportunity to do a big, you know, full-blown television show, you know, from a comedic perspective. He wasn't so much into singing, but the skits and the and the faces and the voices and all that stuff. It's like, this is like hanging out with so-and-so, uh, you know, back in college. Yeah, I, again, I cannot stop how blown away I was by this. Just like the previous thing we talked about with Severance is like, I didn't know anything about it. My daughter's like, oh yeah, I heard of him. He's a YouTube guy. He's been around. I'm like, did you watch it? No, nah, I don't want to watch it. It's like, oh, okay, but you should watch it because it's really good. No, nah, no, nah, I don't want to watch it. It's like, okay, all right, fine. Don't tell me it's not good or tell me, you know, I was like, I had this this little argument with her. It's like, I don't want to know your opinion if you don't watch it. Because if, if you don't watch it, you cannot give me your opinion. You can tell me what other people said about it, and hopefully those people have watched it, but you don't have an informed opinion if you do not watch the show. I watch bad movies many times. This way I know it's a bad movie. I, you know, you don't have to tell me it's a bad movie, but sometimes it's the curiosity of, well, how bad is this movie? And sometimes you get surprised because sometimes, again, when you're dealing with art, it's so subjective and it's kind of like something that you might absolutely dislike somebody else will love. It's that crazy. And and to me, this was kind of like that. It was like the description of this, no, 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 no. And then I watched it. I'm like, oh my God, here we go. I got to eat all my words because this is amazing. I've gone on YouTube and I've downloaded as many of the songs as possible. I prefer 
the more produced songs that he has with more modern music because in his earlier performances you know all he has is a piano so he's he's kind of doing songs with just a piano with a keyboard but i'm i'm slowly working my way my way backwards he also, he also had a i think like an MTV show for like one season or something i want to see if i can find that to see if that's any good but this is perfect because this is you know you find something new and now you get to explore that it because there's more behind it and there's more shows and there's more audio recordings and youtube videos and and you kind of can track the history i'm almost afraid that this might be the best because when you get introduced to something that is the best it's like, well, after you peak, you can only go downhill. But I hope he, he does, obviously, more shows or, or even something like this, something that he was able to produce without having to go live. You know, let him produce stuff. You know, if it works for him, great. Because, you know, that's one of the things we hear. He actually also just won a Grammy, I believe, uh, for this performance, for this musical performance of this song in this special. And one of the things he talks about is that when he was ready to come out back to performing after he got better from the panic attacks, that's when COVID hit. And right at the time when he was ready to go, it was like, nope, get back in your house. And he was stuck in there for a little longer. And this is what he came up with, you know, performance wise. Again, I know this is different. I know this is a little weird. And I'm sure some people will be like, nope, it's not going to work. doesn't work for me. But these three things we talked about are things that I really like and are things that all kind of coincide in a way, if you think about it, with what has been going through in my life on the last uh, about three months. All these things kind of uh, perfect storm, I guess you can call it, of, of things that are happening. But just so you know, things are getting better things are manageable. We will see what direction things go in the next few uh, months. But uh, hopefully, as I said on my last show, I will be able to put out more frequent shows. There's a whole bunch of shows I watched uh, over the last couple months that I've never had a chance to talk about. So I'm going to do a couple of roundups like that. A couple of new shows are about to restart that I was, I've been waiting for. Movies. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some really good movies lately that I want to talk about. But as far as these go, like I said, Office Space and Severance and Bo Burnham Inside. Find them. Give them a try. Well, just as it's happened many times before, as we are putting the show to bed, breaking news. Specifically having to do with this last subject we talked about, and that is Bo Burnham's special, Inside. News came through, I guess, Twitter or Facebook or whatever social media channels you are you're into that Bo Burnham is putting out a more or less one hour long special of all the outtakes and material that he didn't use for Inside. And it's dropping on YouTube in his YouTube channel for free. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, the first thing I did was I started searching for if there is an actual version of it that you can just purchase because I was already, okay, I'm like, okay, great. Now I'm going to have to download this. I'm going to have to edit down the songs, blah, blah, blah. This No, there's an album version that you can purchase, which I did. I think I did it through iTunes. Yeah, I did. I did mine through iTunes that has basically everything from the special and then everything from the outtakes and the outtakes are, they're just great. Some of them are not, you know, full-length songs, but neither are some of his regular songs anyway. Some songs kind of end very abruptly. But whatever it, it is that you're into, this is like all of a sudden an artist releasing an album and then realizing that, wait a minute, a week later, he's just released another album. And you're like, oh my God, there's just so much good material here. And again, you know, given the, the obsessive... <laughs> <laughs> you know, the collector in me, but, you know, honestly, cause I enjoy it. I enjoy this particular artist. It is just fantastic. The stuff that he has on this special, uh, granted, this is a visual medium that he's using, even though some of his earlier albums, you know, were sold and you could listen to them and eventually you could watch some of those specials. But this is something that is very specifically made for the visual medium nevertheless 
The material that's there is great. I've added it to my Bo Burnham playlists that I have <laughs> on my iPhone. And sitting there watching the special, I was just laughing my head off at how good it is. I would say it is almost as good as the special itself. You can tell, okay, yes, he didn't want to make a two and a half hour long <laughs> special, so he had to trim a lot of stuff out. But the stuff that he's put together for this, you know, outtake bonus, it's a special in its own. It is just great. It is funny. It is super creative. It is... You know, just like you have all these different bits and these different ways of visualizing, you know, the, you know, the light setup and the, the manner in which you shoot something and, and, and it's just the quality of the songs and the tone of the songs. It's here, too. It's like there's just more variation on everything. Plus, there's also like alternative ways of editing some of the other stuff. The creative process of how he was putting it together it is just so damn cool again if you're not into this you're not into this that's fine but if you're into that special this is just great this is just such a great bonus material you know i'm, I'm just eating it up so again this was just something that dropped out of nowhere and i felt I have to uh, include it in this particular show because it's a continuation of what I was just telling you before. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. We looked at three different presentations, a movie, a television show, and a comedy musical special. And I cannot recommend them enough. Some oldies, some new things, a couple of just wacky, wacky things that came out of nowhere that completely blew me away and as i mentioned these are things that are resonating with me especially lately having to do with my work and health these three are kind of like a perfect storm of being able to describe a situation without having to get into detail let's put it that way but i'm sure anybody can relate to a lot of the things that happen on these three presentations and even aside from my own personal issues these are perfect these are great these are wonderful great sources of entertainment and i hope you guys enjoyed them as much as i've enjoyed them so on behalf of everyone here thank you for listening and we will see you soon here at geek fest rants bye bye everybody Hello, my name is Mark S. And I have, of my own free accord, elected to undergo the procedure known as severance. I give consent to sever my memories between my work life and my personal life. I acknowledge that once the procedure is complete, I will be unable to access my personal memories whilst on the severed floor. Say gratitude. Nor will I retain work memories. Hey. Sorry. When I return home at the end of the day. I make these statements freely. Hi kids, what's for dinner? We warned you. About the greeting, you were kidding. We hate it. How many reasons did we come up with? Eight. Good morning. Hi, Mr. Milchak. Mark, could I have a word? Petey is no longer with this company. I'm sorry, Mark. You guys are one of my favorite office friendships. What happened? We'd love to tell you, but unfortunately, non-disclosure policy forbids. I confer upon you the advanced role of department chief. Congratulations. A handshake is available upon request. Thank you. May I have a handshake? I know you. My name is Petey. I'm from work. So, we're friends? I'm your best friend. Nothing is what they say. I used to think it would take a monster to put someone in a place like that office. Especially if the person was himself. If you want to know what's going on down there, you'll find the beginning of a very long answer. 
happening. What is it we actually do here? It's important your eyes be kind. Do you know how to make your eyes kind? On a beautiful day. If you would like to subscribe to our show, send us messages, or see video links to some of the topics we talked about today, please visit our homepage at geekfestrants.com or our YouTube channel, Facebook page, or iTunes at Geekfest Rants. I don't know what we're yelling about! Geekfest Rants is produced by Carlos Perone, copyright 2022. <laughs>